didn't wear a tartan, he didn't wear a kilt. But this is the traditional Wallace tartan. And I think you'll agree, it's just resplendent. A fair bit of leg poking out there, isn't there? <laughs> but nothing else is poking out. Anyway, right, folks, we've done a mask review today. As you've just seen there, you know, old one hand himself, one hand, big chin, Ash from the Evil Dead series. And I even cut my own hand off as well, just for the part. Join us. His buddy over there, Evil Ed, from Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2, Evil Ash, by Tots Trick or Treat Studios. And it... <laughs> Jesus. You know, I just spent ages trying to find a blue sort of work shirt, like Ash wears in all the movies. Or I'm just going to bloody the whole thing up, and I couldn't find one. In fact, I've got so few shirts that actually have sleeves. I ended up plumping for this, which is a nice bit of, nice bit of kit, you know, but it's hardly Evil Dead. Anyway, folks, we've got Joe LaDuca's fantastic score to Evil Dead 2 playing as a bit of accompaniment. I have read from the pages of the Necronomicon, and I have brought forth the Evil Ash. Now, what I love about Evil Ash is that, you know, as a character in the movie, Ash is a fucking idiot. He's a danger zone. Now you know that because he's a buffoon. You know, whatever he touches turns to shit. He has to, he has to take his own hand off. He's clumsy, he's an idiot. He, he, he's a more of a danger to him, himself, and the people around him than any of the deadites are. And then his hand gets possessed. He lops it off. And of course, he gets possessed as well. And I love the fact that it's such a random possession. You don't know when he's gonna turn. He doesn't know. And it's just brilliant. Anyway. It's a great design. This is Tot's Trick or Treat. I do not know the guy that sculpted this. Or the woman. I don't know. So uh, it's not listed anywhere. So I'm afraid I can't tell you. But, you know, in typical Tot's Trick or Treat style, we have wonderful detail. It's very screen accurate. We have the dead eyes eyes. They are actually ringed with red as well. You have these sunken, shallow bits here. You see out of little slits above here when you're wearing the mask. We have numerous cuts and abrasions, and they look pretty, pretty nasty. That one there, because it's a great glisten, you know. I have discussed this sort of effect before, when they, they claw in deep scratches and you know, abrasions. They're, they're ready, they're ready. <laughs> they're red and angry, otherwise known as ready. And, um, but they have a bit of glistening effect on it as well. So it's like that shiny, gory blood detail. It makes you go, ooh, that, that's gotta hurt. Look at his teeth. They're purely rotten. Purely rotten. Now, I don't know how many ciggies he's been putting away a day, like, but my God, they're in a bad, bad way. Uh, the mouth is sealed, but doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, I prefer it that way. We have Bruce Campbell. Bruce the chin. Look at his chinny chin chin there. You know, which is... No exaggeration, it gives him this sort of aquiline horse effect. <laughs> Plenty of blood and gore on him. Wonderfully screen accurate. It's slightly dinged on this side from the packaging. But you know, oh, for those of you that want proof that this is a genuine trick or treat, there you go. And we have, there's Evil Ed there as well. Over there. Tots. There it is. You know, I, I, I prepared this one earlier. Two things arrived yesterday, two masks, and you're gonna get to the other one in a wee bit as well. And that's a doozy too. But this one, acres of neck coverage with all this beautiful sort of raised veins and, you know, striated flesh. It's brilliant. A fair bit of coverage at the back as well. And then we come on to what some people say is a brilliant thing, and I would say is not so brilliant. Uh, the hair is rooted, it has been stitched in, you see, as opposed to just being glued on and layered, 
it's been stitched in and layered. But the problem I find with it is that although some people say the coverage is great, that ain't great. Now I know you can play with this a fair bit and smooth it all down and disguise those little alopecia patches, but I think you've got to do a fair bit of work to make that happen. Uh, actual style of the hair is accurate to Ash's hair when he's possessed, when he becomes a deadite. You know, so it's, and the face is purely brilliant. Let's get that dinge out of it. Because you can actually see, not only does it look like the creature that Ash becomes, it looks like Bruce Campbell as well. So it, it's very accurate. It looks like Bruce Campbell in the makeup. And it's brilliant. Annie! Annie! <laughs> Join us. Now, if you don't like Evil Dead 2, then there's something wrong with you. It's uh, it's the most enjoyable of the Evil Dead uh, original trilogy, by far. I know some people love uh, Army of Darkness. I love roughly half of that. And not a direct half, and then I don't like the second half. It's bits in throughout the movie which I love, and other bits which I think are a bit shit. But overall, I love this trilogy. I love the first film as well, I think the first film is absolute genius. As tacky and as amateur and as, inno as innovative and inventive as it is. I mean, you see Raimi's uh, as a director, as uh, a choreographer of, of incredible, you know, crazy antics and gore effects. He is still one of the benchmarks ever. The way he staged some of the elaborate attacks and possessions. Obviously, with a bit more experience under his belt, when Evil Dead 2 came out, or Dead by Dawn, as people over the pond like to know it as, he was more accomplished. And although he reined back a bit on the blood and guts, uh, and to keep the ratings down, he went for like different coloured blood green blood, blue blood, black blood, all sorts of different colour blood. But avoid the red blood because that would obviously incur the wrath of the, the MPAA and obviously the censors over in this country, the BBFC. And he'd run afoul of the BBFC big time with the Evil Dead, <laughs> which was of course celeb of the video nasty phase. And uh, But it's still got uber truckloads of violence. You know, who's laughing now? He chainsaws his own hand off. And it, it's just, it's such genius. Uh, so funny. It's eerie, I wouldn't say scary, but it's got an atmosphere to it, which is uncanny. And the whole, uh, okay, they reinvent what happens in the first movie, and then they go on to like, you know, a kind of abridged version, where he didn't have his sister and his other friend there. Not him, not him, I keep forgetting about him. <laughs> he wasn't in the first, he wasn't Scott, was he? Uh, but it works. And then it expands the whole Necronomicon thing, where you, you get to see the thing that's prowling through the uh, the woods at you know breakneck speed, just about dodging trees, and uh, and then of course he, he opens a time portal and he goes back in time, and it's just it's just clever. It's a clever mythology that he created. Incidentally, you can get the uh, well, you can't get it yet, but I think it's it's up for pre-order, and I think it's actually available in September, which we're almost in now. This at the time of recording. Oh, hang on a minute, it is September. September started today. Wow, so there you go. It should be available this month. You can get two versions of it, but it is an authentic replica of the book of Necronomicon. One has got printed pages with all the diagrams that you see on it, all those intricately woven, you know, inked, you know, inked in human blood on pages of human flesh. And it's just bound in by human flesh, I should say. And you've got a version of that which looks absolutely amazing with all these pages full of these rich diagrams and then you've got a version which has blank pages and the reason behind that is that you might want to do your own artwork personally I know the one I'm getting it's fully fully done for me you know I don't want my doodles on it they look ridiculous I remember getting there my tattoo on my shoulder is a, a snarling a sort of big savage timber wolf with two cross commando daggers to denounce, you know, my Royal Marine days. And I went into Richie in tribal life in Liverpool and I said, look, here's my design, I want this. And he went, wow, that's great. I've never seen one like that before. And uh, he said, but do you want to look at my wolves? And I went, um, well, what's wrong with mine? Well, it looks more like a, a Yorkshire Terrier, doesn't it? And then he showed me his portfolio of wolves and I went, uh, that's what a wolf looks like. I like that one, I like that one, that one, that one. That one. 
anyway. So my drawing ain't, ain't worth diddly. But look at this guy. The teeth, the nose, that big nose. The blood effects. Now the paint job on these does vary. I've seen other ones where there's big blobs of blood on the forehead. Uh, this only has a, a slight speckling of it. We have the hair, hairline is glued in around here. Which does add to keeping the shape, this, this distinctive look of the hairline. And although I've got my reservations about that, and that really is, that's not, that to me is not good. The hair feels, well, it feels real. It does. So that's a plus point, you know. And maybe, maybe you can really take the time to work on it and spray the hair down, gel it down, I don't know. But you want a bit of a tousled, messy look. Because he's just, when you see him in, like this, for one thing, when he rises up, join us! You know, that red mist is swirling around him. You know, that's a brilliant, brilliant image. And he shouldn't look like he's just, you know, brushed his hair. So yeah, Evil Ash. Can you see into that? That looks, it looks, oh, ooh, ow. You know, there's, there's no cream you can put on that, no ointment that's gonna make that heal up. That's set for life, you know? Listen to the music. So you can see where it's been stitched, glued, glued here, glued here, stitched in around there. Now, as I always try and show you, there could be markings on the inside, and indeed there are, and a number. We have, well it could be 1781, or it could be 1181, I'm not too sure. And um, remember I showed you last time, that glorious little pumpkin stamp. Yeah, it does seem that all the, um, the trickle sheet stuff now is coming with that, that stamp on it. Now this has been available for a few years now, and uh, ones I've seen you used elsewhere did not have that pumpkin stamp, so that's obviously a new thing for trickle treat. Also, I think we found it on a, a Ghoulish Productions or Ghoulish Studios uh, mask as well. I think there was a stamp in there. So maybe they're coming from the same place, you know, the, the same shipping company. They might be produced somewhere, then they go out to be shipped from somewhere. So they get this pumpkin stamp to denote it's a horror mask. Ideally worn around Halloween time. So we'll give it a little pumpkin, you know. But yeah, and it is buddy. We are the things that were and will be again. And he does that crazy dance. Do check out the video I made about this one a while ago. Because that is a that is a great mask, that one. Look at that. Look at the teeth on this. It is that more of fangs and molars and the, the little outstretched tongue. Fabulous stuff. But this guy, you know. The other masks you can get are Henrietta, you know, who's the uh, the grandmother or the mother. And, uh, and the PV monster. So the, the bottom two there. Now, gotta be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the look of Henrietta. Oh, I know, you know. Kill man, for the collection, you must get it. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe one day. But uh, I wouldn't mind the PV one, PV, PV head, because that's brilliant. I love the way he changes and transforms as well. And he goes into this jerky stop motion creature as well. It, it's so blatantly, you know, matted in, superimposed, and you know, it's it's not seamless. Doesn't matter. Overall, Evil Dead 2 has high production values for a low budget movie. The cabin looks amazing. The cleverness of the effects, uh, the, the lighting, the colors, the whole production design is just, the bar is raised considerably from the first movie. And it's a lot better than the third movie, which I think, even though you have hordes of stop motion, um, Skeleton Army, the Army of the Dead. They should be called the Medieval Dead. Why did they just drop that? It's the Medieval Dead, that's a perfect title. But it does look a bit tacky in places. You know, I, I love it, don't get me wrong, but I do have some reservations about that movie, which I don't have with the first two. And this, when I watch, if I'm gonna watch the Evil Dead movie, straight away I'm going for Evil Dead 2. It's got that unique atmosphere. It doesn't have a disturbing, you know, rape by tree, which Sam Raimi admits uh, was going a step too far. And it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the film. Now I've got no uh, truck with, you know, any types of violence, if it's justified in, in the movie and the story. But that, 
didn't really fit in. So uh, it's a, that's a bit too disturbing and a bit too controversial. Uh, however, people are getting dismembered and chopped to bits and uh, chainsawed and all sorts. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> that doesn't matter at all. Eye gougings and stuff, you know. You have pretty flesh. Give it to us. You know. Join us. It's classic, isn't it? It's classic. And the, the, the rotten, the rotten apple head is the big demon that comes through the door at the end when Ash goes, and his hair goes, he gets, he gets Mad Max style white streaks in his hair. Oh, we have something else here as well. Listen up, you primitive screwheads. This is my boomstick. Uh, groovy. <laughs> you wait till I get that ne Necronomicon book. You wait till I learn how to pronounce the word Necronomicon. Ne 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 that big book of spells, yeah? So folks, trick or treat, evil ash. I'm going to keep this video fairly short because I have another one to do and, uh, and maybe a quick co costume change as well. Who knows? Um, so yeah, what do you guys think of that then? Yeah, and I know there's a bit of a, a bit of a dinge there. Bear in mind, this only arrived yesterday and I haven't really had time to play around with it, mainly because I spent all day yesterday watching The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. Yes! I finally caught up. Yes! After bigging it up and telling you all to go and watch it. And I fell asleep in the first 10 minutes. Mm, I've still got two episodes to go. So don't spoil it for me. Um, and it's fantastic. It's by far the best thing that I've seen on TV for quite some time. Because uh, obviously Game of Thrones, which was the pinnacle of TV production, uh, dropped the ball disastrously with uh, its final season. But this is just... It's eye candy. It's moving, it's captivating, it's inventive, it's enthralling, it's mythical. It has so much to it and it's got the best soundtrack that I've heard for quite some time, I'll be honest. Daniel Pemberton and Simon, is it Cy Simons or something? I can't remember the guy's name, he's another collaborator. I'll get all this worked out because we're going to review everything Dark Crystal very soon. Um, it's just to die for and it's available in two volumes. Dark Crystal Age Resistance Volume 1. And then volume two. Overall, you've got two and a half hours of so sumptuous, lavish, fantastic music. But let's not forget the music playing right now. Joe LaDuca is a very unsung hero in mu music scoring um, pantheons. This guy did Le Pac de Lou, Brotherhood of the Wolf, which is one of my favourite films of all time. I will cover that extensively, and his score for that is just sumptuous, baroque exciting, unusual. His score for the first Evil Dead, people never go on about the score for the first one because it does seem very sort of uh, experimental and strange and bizarre. It is, but it's cleverly done as well. When you listen to it divorced from the movie, because it's one of those films that has one of those, people call it a, an apocryphal sound design because it's, it's mixed up front, it's mixed badly. Even when they try and remix it now, but it's, you know, it's, it's inevitable 4K release and all this sort of stuff. Um, and remastered, you know, high def releases. Uh, they do remixed 5.1 surrounds or 7.1 surrounds or fucking whatever. You know, uh, it's still a very upfront and a very brazen, brash, kind of scratchy in your face uh, sort of soundtrack. But when you listen to the music separate from the movie, listen to the actual album itself, the music is really clever, spectacularly eerie. Whereas in this one, it's more. It's more orchestral, it's more highly polished and produced. There's a lot more themes running through it, you know. And it just has, you know, a, a richer, deeper, more conventional quality to it. Um, but it's still awesome, and I love it to bits. <laughs> I love the way that the hand walks into a, a mouse trap, and he goes, ha ha ha, like that, and he goes, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. It actually speaks. How does a hand speak? Just genius, genius, I tell you. So, there we go. And his dead eyes eyes. Come on, check. Now, the eyes on Evil Ed, they don't appear to be red ringed. And I checked, and in the film, his are, his are red ringed. You know, when you see it. Oh. 
Annie! Annie, can you see that? <laughs> I haven't got the actual uh, pendant necklace, but that will do. So, folks, Evil Ash from Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. An absolute barnstorming roller coaster of blood, guts, and mayhem. And here he is. Join us. Folks, I'm going to leave it there. And I'll speak to you all. I've got my hand back. Dead by dawn! Dead by dawn! <laughs>